So I call this talk uh, Pragmatic View Controller. It's sort of a, I don't know, backlash on all of the talk about uh, massive view controllers and sort of minimal view controllers and extracting everything into sort of files and having a very sort of strict and hard rules for uh, your view controllers. So uh, I work in a startup uh, right now. So this is going to be sort of what I've learned, some sort of tips and tricks, uh, what I found works for me, but I mean, it's probably different for everyone. So it's just to start a discussion and try to put some, some word on some concepts. So, uh, oh, nice move, right? Uh, picture of me. No, I'm the CTO at uh, Prion right now, which stands for Privacy On. And uh, Prion is a sort of just a private photo sharing application. Think of it as a sort of private Instagram. The, the code I, that you saw when I sort of fiddled around with Xcode is actually from uh, Prion, and I'm going to use that to sort of exemplify during the talk. Uh, yeah, I can show you Prion a lot uh, more later. So in startups, uh, there are sort of some limitations. We have some something that some things that we need to prioritize. You always need to ship very fast because time is always the limit. You have you don't have many devs. You maybe don't even have a designer. So keeping your code changeable so you can actually change it fast is a, is a high priority because I mean preferably you would actually have the code do different things without changing it haven't found how to do that yet, but I mean, you need to keep it changeable and uh, you need to keep it maintainable. So because we are shipping fast and you're always sort of releasing almost on a daily basis, um, you're going to run into trouble because you're re releasing too fast. Oh, now we're going dark as well. Nice. <laughs> uh, sorry. And uh, <laughs> just a spotlight on you. That's nice. Just don't touch them. Anyway. So we need to keep it maintainable so we can sort of find and uh, fix bugs fast because when you release that often, it, I mean, something is going to slip through, right? So these sort of go into each other quite, quite a lot, but uh, I've just kept them separate to sort of categorize up some different uh, things I want to uh, point at. So uh, let's start with just changeable. So I talked about sort of the massive view controller uh, problem, which is... I guess it's just that a view controller is very long. I think long view controllers can also be very good. Uh, I don't think sort of the size is uh, usually the problem. Um, I have several sort of thousand line view controllers that are fine and several that are really horrible. Uh, so I don't think sort of the problem lies there. It could be a could be a good indication that you that something might be up, but doesn't have to be the actual problem. Uh, more likely, or what I found is that uh, when you have when you have troubles, is you're in your methods. So I mean, the main component of, of, of view controllers are, are methods. So bad methods are usually what I find, at least, what makes a view controller sort of hard to understand and hard to uh, change specifically. So I mean, and these methods are methods that do different things, maybe on different sort of context levels, doing a lot of nested stuff with a lot of different exit points and returns all over the code. Uh, so those are sort of uh, methods that you want to wanna avoid or clean up. And I put up just a, a little thing about short hairs. A lot of people say like, okay, but let's try, let's just try to keep the methods short then. Let's keep them like, yeah, I don't know, 10, 20 lines maximum. That's sort of that's what makes them clean is to understand it doesn't again doesn't have to be the length there are plenty of sort of 400 line methods that are fine just you know 400 lines of drawing code straight up and down single level nothing hard to understand i think that's a that's a great method so short is not really uh, the problem here but i sort of looked at uh, my code both the bad and the good and i tried to sort of categorize up what I think, categorize up different types of methods that I and how to sort of compose these to actually uh, make it changeable and, and easy to, to understand. So I sort of split them up into, uh, into three. Uh, I just made these names up just to have something to talk about. Uh, I call them sort of actions, uh, transformers and composers. Uh, so actions are just 
methods or functions that might take some data and then perform some action and might return a result. Uh, so that could be, I don't know, so that could be, let's see if I can get my mouse over here. That could be if we just switch over to Xcode. So for example, accept the invitation here. I mean, it takes no arguments, but it does something and then it returns something, you know? And it, but it does only that. It doesn't concern itself with, with uh, uh, asynchronous stuff. It actually does two things down here that are actually sort of network requests and it does it synchronously. That's, uh, I mean, that might be interesting. Anyway, th those are actions. So you, take in, you might take in something and you might return something. And then you have uh, transformers or what I call transformers, which is just functions that take in some data and then return or returns a result. Here it's typically, you know, so in Prion, as I talked about, we have groups and groups have members. So a typical sort of transformer thing would be to take in a group, pick out the list of members and then sort of translate that into a string that can actually be presented on screen. Those are sort of typically transformers in, in my eyes. And then we have composers. So composer, composers are actually uh, methods that just decides what to do, that we should do it sort of asynchronously and how to handle completions. And they use actions and transformers to just, you know, compose up what should be done. So in that way, you can have a very clear sort of picture. The login function do does this. Okay, so we check that every, every field is filled in. And then you actually have an action that performs the login itself. And then you have the try and, uh, and catch in, in, in the composer. I just sort of try to categorize up them and just to have something to talk about. I found that it's easier to uh, to to do that if you have uh, categorized up, categorized them up like that. So building on that sort of concept of of methods uh, and uh, and actions, I I mean sometimes you want to share code, obviously. So <laughs> I call I call them controllers, sharing actions and uh, composers. So just separate files really where you where you share these types of uh, functionality and this makes it sort of i mean this makes it easy to know like okay so this is a controller so that handles actions and it handles sort of composing uh, and these can be used by sort of multiple view controllers but i usually don't abstract these out before before you actually need to share the code between multiple view controllers could be confusing calling it controllers if anyone has a better name please let me know. Uh, and then there has been a lot of talk about view models. Uh, and this, for me, is just transformers. So basically taking in models, like view model, and preparing them for being displayed on, on, on screen. So just, for example, you know, as I talked about, taking a hashtag or a photo and that we have in Prion and then preparing them to be displayed. It could be uh, creating a task for downloading the actual image for the photo or like the members of the groups and so on. And these are usually shared between view controllers as well, because I mean, you display them in multiple view controllers. So I break them out into view models. Uh, I don't actually pass these between, a lot of people do that. They actually create a, something they call a view model, then they pass them between view controllers. I actually don't because I found that view models, well, they're usually different for different view controllers because view controllers want to show different parts of different models, you know, and not, not all of the view controllers are going to show uh, the photo part of photos. It might just show permissions to the photos, for example. So I just, for me, it's just a thin wrapper around uh, the model that sort of takes out some uh, stuff from it and uh, makes it displayable. Uh, and this is sort of, yeah, the part. Uh, so let's uh, talk about the asynchronous stuff. I think, as I stated here, that the best async is sync. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's basically just a joke. But it's a lot easier to follow asynchronous stuff if it uh, looks synchronous. So if, if, if you're using a library for it or however you're doing it, my preferred way is to just sort of have blocking methods but call them on a different dispatch queue. Um, I found that that works for me, but, I mean, you can do it however you want. Uh, I'm going to come back to sort of all of those... I have a little rant about reactive cocoa and stuff like that in the end, so we'll get back to, we'll get back to that. Um, but that's sort of 
it's a lot easier to change synchronous stuff than to change asynchronous stuff because it can easily get out of hand with nesting and completion blocks and completions calling completion on what thread and so on. Uh, so I like to see, uh, try to keep it uh, synchronous. All right, so maintainability. Uh, all right, everyone has talked about this a lot, so I'm not going to go into sort of details, but just to to actually be able to change things or maintain them, find bugs, try to use uh, descriptive names. It's for it's for your own good. Uh, further on, uh, and by descriptive names, I just mean like say what it is and what it does. It doesn't have to be sort of complex or sort of follow some specific scheme. Just try to put some sort of good name on it. If I mean, yeah, and try to make it longer sort of than a single letter. That's sort of the next next uh, thing up here. Try to, <laughs> just some tips on this, try to not use obscurities. I've found several times where people use sort of funny obscurities in their code and sort of e even in sort of alert messages. It, I mean, it, it might be fun when you, when you do it, but it's not fun when sort of the customer, you're sitting in a customer presentation and they sort of get curse words uh, up on the screen. Uh, so, I mean, just don't. Uh, <laughs> all right, so then the second thing, uh, the uh, single letter variables. Uh, I mean, I love algebra, but uh, I mean, there are some cases where single letter variables are very useful, like X and Y. I mean, that's an obvious place where you actually should use them when you have a coordinate system. But otherwise, I try to just stay away from them because it see, tends to just confuse. And we do have auto-completion. It's not that hard to write out. Uh, like context and it's the same for uh, abbreviations try to sort of write out the entire name context not that hard to write you don't have to call it cxt uh, because then you just have to another sort of lap in your head trying to figure out what this thing actually is um, yeah next thing about maintainable view controllers order so i've come into a few projects where sort of the ordering, if you open a view controller, you have no idea where to find stuff. I mean, you can obviously search. I mean, the tools are, are great and you can search and try to find stuff. But I try, I mean, I, uh, I find that just keeping some sort of semi-ordered, um, some structure for how you order your view controllers helps you sort of navigate them and find where, where stuff goes. Um, right now, I'm doing something like this. Um, I mean, you can use your own, extend, uh, remove, whatever. But uh, I try to keep my instance variables sort of, sort of at the top. Um, have any sort of nested types here as well. If you have any sort of enums representing anything locally, just for that view controller, keep them at the top. Uh, and then have all the uh, view lifecycle stuff. So you have your view did load, view will load, view did load, preferably in the order that they actually happen, so you can actually find them. Uh, so have like view did load at the top and view did unload at the bottom just so you can sort of follow them um, then I tend to sort of put in IB actions you know button presses and uh, stuff from gesture recognizers and stuff like that and underneath that I I call it utility methods here it's basically all of the methods that I talked about in the beginning you know the actions the transformers all the things that actually do things uh, I try to keep sort of separate there towards the end of uh, of the view controller and then I have extensions uh, after that you know before doing table view stuff or collection view stuff or any other sort of protocol uh, extensions you want to do after that um, I just I, I just find that keeping things in order makes it easier for me to find it and make makes it so I can fix stuff faster which is I guess is the goal uh, okay Last thing, let's talk about reactive programming. Just a little bit, okay. So I'm just gonna tell you a short story of why I just stopped doing reactive cocoa and sort of promise kit things. I actually have a lot of sort of reactive cocoa and, and promise kit still in Prion, uh, unfortunately. But uh, I mean, you can use it. I mean, it's cool, it's fun. Please do it in your in your side projects, but keep it in the side projects. Don't Don't ship it and I'll tell you why. We uh, in Prion, you know, it's a it's a fairly sort of uh, processor heavy app when you're actually posting stuff. We're cropping images, uh, processing that, and we're uploading uh, 
uh, quite a few megabytes sort of because we're actually uploading almost the originals to, to the server um, and we f I found that when we uploaded like a photo that was I don't know 1.2 megabytes or something in the original uh, using uh, reactive cocoa we actually it actually took like 200 megabytes of RAM uh, and I was probably doing it wrong I mean you can probably do it right but just changing it to just a normal dispatch queue like solved everything it's like exactly the same code just in the normal dispatch queue solved everything and we would i mean it, it it was still bad it was it's still like 20 megabytes of ram it's probably way too much could be optimized but at least we're not getting sort of out of memory crashes um so i mean that just burnt me and it was like i can't get this right without spending too much time on it and with the uh, queue so it's uh, no problem um yeah so I don't know. Try it, but uh, word of caution. Uh, yeah, I can go into a lot, go into a lot more detail or talk about these things all day. But I'm just gonna sort of uh, end it there and just say it's sort of try and rehiring. Talk to me and please, please let me know what I what, what I'm doing wrong because that that I want to know. I want to improve sort of how I think and structure my code. So. Uh, if anyone sort of wants to take a discussion, please uh, let me know a better way, better words, better wording, uh, anything would be uh, nice to move along. Okay. Not everyone is asleep, that's good. I see a few over there, you know, they're sort of <laughs> draping down. So, do we have any questions? Yeah. Go right ahead. Yeah. Um, your last slide about reactive cocoa. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, you it's just yeah, it was specifically about reactive cocoa, but uh, yeah. Um, so you put a lot of uh, like at the bottom, like an other hip stuff. Uh, I yeah. think I didn't know exactly what hip stuff you had in mind, uh, but that's not really my. Uh, ah, okay. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I I've just put everything. Uh, it was sort of just a, a mash together of no. Like, I, new stuff basically i think i think uh it's a bit unfair to say that reactive programming or reactive cocoa specifically is not ready mm -hmm. for production because it's used in a yeah. lot of like f fairly like large yeah, code yeah, yeah. bases and i've seen it in production environments that are like mission critical apps and stuff mm -hmm. like that so i think it's a bit unfair to not specifically to to reactive cocoa that there are other like reactive programming mm -hmm. like libraries out there and I guess I guess it's more like if you don't know how to use it properly, mm -hmm. you will make mistakes, yep. and it will probably be like loop in something or like a signal that has more than more subscribers than it should, mm -hmm. or it's triggering a signal is triggering another signal which triggers back the other one. So you can you can have issues like these, mm -hmm. but I guess that's a programmer fault, not the tools fault. No, no, that's, uh, that's, the, that's <laughs> true. That, that's what I said. I mean, oh, okay. you can probably do it better than I can, but. It was too much for me, you know. But I just want—I just need. Uh, this is a startup environment, <laughs> so you just need to solve it fast. Totally fair. I, totally I, fair. I, I'm but, just but, saying but that's, that's true as, that you say. Like it, it's fair. It has been around for quite a while, and they've sort of even sort of uh, migrated out to have this sort of Swift uh, only thing, uh, which is a bit smaller. Uh, so yeah, I mean, as you say, it's it's fair. The, you can use it, but you know, because like you I need imagine, to know what you're doing. I imagine someone who. Um, no, um, it's it's not a question really. No, it's a it's a great comment. It's it's fair, totally fair. Okay, so questions. It's not so much a question, but definitely on topic. That's but a nice start topic. for every comment I get now. Sorry. You were we were saying like uh, um, what makes uh, speedier development for startups, and I've been yeah. there. Yeah. And my experience is that if you parameterize a lot of things. Then mm -hmm. you get a lot of much, much speed because someone says you need to do this different. Then you go into the config file and things happen. Mm -hmm. That that's something I think you have to go away from manually coding a lot. I mm -hmm. mean, still, in, in not totally exactly for for the for the uh, view controller, but in, in general and even for the view controller, mm -hmm. I I rather uh, use that approach. Have yeah, you, yeah, yeah, have you experienced that? I, I've done some things around that, but I haven't sort of explored it uh, fully. But it's 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 very interesting to have sort of uh, a configuration of some sort driving it. Uh, it's very hard to, or for for me at least, I haven't been able to wrap my head around changing those specific details that I need to 
change in that sort of fashion. But I, I, I'm sure it could, it could be done and would be sort of very useful when you can change it that quickly. You know, it sounds like a like a great idea. It should be explored more. You have another over there, Alec. Just an observation here. Uh, one of the slides you mentioned that you had uh, composers, transformers, and actions. Yeah. That sounded basically like re you had reinvented Redux or Flux-based programming. Uh, have you had a look at that before? Reinvented. What was the name? Oh, Flux or uh, Redux-like programming. Oh, okay. No, I haven't. Uh, I haven't yeah. heard of that. I, I, as I said, when I when I put that slide up, I just sort of made up the names based on so what I thought sort of could categorize methods. I haven't have, had a look at that. That seems. Interesting. Should. I should should have a look at it. Yeah. Thank you. And Redux works really well with React. <laughs> Just it does. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, sure. 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 <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.